The Kaiser Family Foundation presents Health08.org, election news, analysis, and events. Karen Ignani, thank you for joining us today on Health08.org. My pleasure, thank you. What is, in your organization's view, the single largest problem facing the healthcare system today? It's the uncertainty for individuals as to whether or not they will be able to maintain their health care coverage, they'll be able to acquire health care coverage, they'll be able to afford health care coverage, and when they use it, the quality will be what they expect. So it's three aspects of one problem, essentially. And when you describe all of those people, you're putting in there, I presume, the uninsured. Yes, the people who do not have coverage now, who absolutely need it, the nation should commit to a proposition that all individuals in our country ought to have health care coverage. We've proposed a strategy to do that. Other organizations have adopted strategies to do it. Many of us have worked together to promote strategies. So I think we're on the cusp of a tipping point for the nation actually to get very serious about finally solving this problem. But it's been a hundred years in which we've tried to solve the problem in this country, as you know. And one of the single most important barriers to solving it is whether or not the nation will commit to the resources necessary to actually solve the problem once and for all. And I suspect we're going to talk about that. We will, but l let's first go to uh, your organization's remedy. Uh -huh. Uh, it was rolled out in 2006. It was a plan for broader coverage than what currently exists, a mixture of private and public. Why don't you explain more of it? Um, it has several propositions that are very straightforward. All Americans should have coverage, and we propose a strategy to get everybody in. It's in uh, there are two aspects fundamentally to it. One is a commitment that the nation must make to repair the safety net, to address consistency across the country with respect to SCHIP eligibility and Medicaid eligibility. Do so from one state to the next, it would need be the same? Consistency. At a minimum, we need consistency, and we do not have that now. For example, in the Medicaid program, which the Kaiser Family mm -hmm. Foundation has worked ex exceedingly hard in trying to address and to, to improve in the Medicaid area, uh, there, is, there are these categorical eligibility restrictions. Nobody understands them throughout the country. We ought to replace that with an income standard. So pure and simple, in our view, anyone under 100 percent of federal poverty should have Medicaid eligibility. That plus SCHIP at 250 percent to make sure that we are repairing the safety net and having the kind of public program foundation that we need as a nation. Second, Why do you put the, the threshold at 100 percent the below 100 percent of the po federal poverty level, that's a fairly low threshold. Well, we could definitely talk about going a little higher, but some states are so far from that 100 percent now. We've been trying to look at the getting certainty with respect to, it it's, would be a major step forward to take Proposition 1 that we've proposed, which is do away with all of the categorical eligibility requirements and restrictions and go just to a simple income test. If we do that, plus we require that all states hit that objective of 100 percent, that it, we're very, very far from that now. So we're trying to propose something that would repair the safety net, which would provide a foundation that could be consistent across the country. And if there are resources to do more, we're certainly prepared to talk about that. This, this leads right into our second proposal, which is to have refundable tax credits for working families so that from 100% uh, to 400% of poverty on a sliding st scale going up to $80,000, providing a helping hand for working families to be able to afford health care coverage. And this would capture many of the currently uninsured? Yes. Well, there, there are several ways to look at the uninsured. One, there, we know there are 11 million people who are eligible for public programs who aren't on the rolls. 11 million is a considerable number, and we need to do a much better job of capturing them, and we've proposed remedies to do that. Two, we know that 12 million people are offered coverage on the job and can't afford to take it. They are offered coverage, but they can't afford to take it. So just the 11 million plus the 12 million, the combination of the safety net strategies plus addressing the problems of working families, we think immediately would take care of that. And then the idea of going up to 400 percent of poverty, if you look at the data to look at where middle-income people who work generally for small employers are feeling 
the problems of losing insurance, employers not being able to provide it, you do see quite a lot of activity between sixty and eighty thousand dollars worth of income, which is why we've proposed a sliding scale up to eighty as opposed to simply sixty. So repairing the safety net, providing helping hands for working families, and then third, what would have helped significantly in the recent experience in California where they simply couldn't put the funds together mm -hmm. to actually achieve universal coverage, providing state grants that the federal government would make available to states that meet specific objectives with respect to coverage to get everybody in. That's essentially our proposal. Now there are other features to our proposal which we think can be very valuable, particularly one with respect to portability. We've proposed a new fund that could be attached to an individual. It's not an account. It's not a particular type of program or a particular type of coverage. It's simply an account that could attach to an individual, stick with him or her throughout their working and retired lives. So if they're eligible for tax credits, it could go into, they could go into the fund. If employers provide subsidies, that could go into the fund. If there are any other government programs that they're eligible for, that could go as well. So you have some and portability. Could they use the fund for? Any, any coverage they care to. And it's not restricted to a particular type of program. So we're going to spend a little more time talking about this with advocacy organizations because the issue of portability is one that has been very frustrating for individuals who find themselves working for a number of employers and they don't have that consistency of coverage. The plan, nowhere mm. in your plan, the, often the word that's used is employers are encouraged to do thus and such. Mm -hmm. Individuals are encouraged to do thus and such. There are no mandates. Why do you steer away from mandates? Well, the way our program works is that we set federal goals, and we did it over a period of time and required states to meet certain goals. So states would have to decide whether they w are going to have an individual mandate, employer responsibility, government, additional government participation, et cetera. So we have the states making those decisions within federal guidelines. They don't get the helping hand from the federal government unless, in fact, they meet the specific coverage requirements. So rather than uh, decide that question in Washington, we made the decision that set the federal guidelines. This is the these these are the, the, the benchmarks you have to hit over a period of time, and then the states would have room to decide this question of individual responsibility, employer responsibility, or additional government responsibility. So they, they could decide how they make those decisions, but they'd have to make them within a peri specific period of time to get the federal funds, or else there would be a federal program that would begin to take hold. And let's presume for a minute that everything you've laid out actually were impl was implemented. How many people do you think would still be uninsured? Um, it depends on how the states actually ap approach this challenge, but we've pr tried to get about 90 to 95 percent of folks who are now uninsured in. There are additional people whom need definitely special programs and special help, have to find them, et cetera, et cetera. We need to do a better job on the eligibility questions in terms of people who are eligible for public programs. So we are um, very supportive of getting everyone in. We wanted to have a strategy where we could do it as quickly as possible. In Massachusetts, for example, there are still a number of people who are outside the program and outside the system because they're hard to find. We recognize that. So we didn't start out with a policy that would leave people out. We are committed to universal coverage, but we're trying to lay down a series of policy proposals that would allow us to move as quickly as possible, recognizing that the the last 5%, the last 2%, depending upon the state, may be a difficult matter to achieve, as, as it has been in other countries, by the way. We've been doing a great deal of research on other countries throughout the globe and whether or not there are 2% out, 3%. In some cases, mm -hmm. it varies between one or the other. And we're trying to learn more about why that is and how we can take those lessons and apply them here. So we're well on our way to trying to solve the rest of the problem and develop strategies that would be addressed toward that. We're committed to 100% everyone should be in, and we should do it as quickly as possible through a series of strategies which are pub public and private. 